kitty. Look who's here. All our fans are out there. Once again, I uh, started the project before I started filming. Um, this is an old uh, Campco camp knife I got. Uh, as you can tell, the uh, the covers are missing. And, um, well, the covers were similar to what you see on this one here. This is also a Campco. Uh, this one is in the bazooka lineup. This was actually a, a knife that um, kids could... Um, they would use uh, bazooka bubblegum wrappers and a certain amount of money, and they could get this uh, knife. Um, as you notice, the the celluloid handles are shrunk on this, um, and um, it's not too bad on this one, but you can see both ends have shrunk. Now, the uh, one on the Camco that was here, you see how this one has shrunk? It, it has shrunk all the way around. Um, um, and that's kind of the way the Camco was, except it had, it had shrunk to the point where, you see these little uh, divots right there? It had shrunk to the point where the uh, handle was missing off a part of that, and it was also cracked and brittle and everything else. So I wanted to uh, go ahead and uh, recover the knife, um, put new covers on it, because once I started cleaning it up, it was actually cleaning up pretty good this was completely rusted you can see now that it looks like a functional can opener it's got pretty decent action right now it's got a nice carbon steel blade going on with it um, you can see the little bit of a patina developing on it and everything and uh, I haven't oiled it all I've done is flushed it out I haven't even oiled this thing yet but it's got pretty good action going on all around um, especially for a knife that's probably from the 1940s or 1950s. Good action still going, but the handles were just awful. But what I liked about it was it had a Camco shield. And if you look at that Camco shield, it was kind of gray, but uh, just a little bit of polishing. And that shield is really nice and bright. And so now I'm thinking I want to put some new covers on here but I'm not sure how I want to do that I don't know if I want to go the wood route which is what a lot of people do they just go ahead and put wood on there or if I want to take something like um, this plumber's epoxy and just mold new handles or new covers and just slap it right in there and then stick the camco shield into the epoxy before it dries and so it would be like new celluloid handles uh, made out of epoxy and according to this uh, makes repairs fast stops leaks hardens like steel single stick easy mix you know and uh, all I'd have to do is kind of shape it flatten it down put it on there clean it up and uh, then center the shield and stick it in there um, but before I do that, I thought I would uh, throw this real quick video out there and ask if anyone has ever tried to do something like that. Because as you've noticed, these are just where the brass has been bent out. Uh, and those were stuck into the back of the celluloid. So the handle was kind of like warm plastic just stuck in there. And um, if you notice how the, um, you can see the center rivet there for the back spring. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, should I just go ahead and try and make uh, new handles out of uh, out of some kind of epoxy, marine epoxy, or this plumber's epoxy, or something else? And uh, if if I'm going to do that, should I like grab something that dries white or dries black? I believe this one is just gray, um, so I'm not sure about that one. In any case, that's where I'm leaning towards instead of going with wood. I mean, I guess I could cut wood, sand it to shape, and stick it on there, but uh, and then stick the shield into that. But I'm wondering uh, about epoxy. Let me know what you think. You know what? While uh, while talking about this knife a minute ago, I, something else came up, and um, and that had to do with this um, steel warrior knife that I got. It was missing its shield. Um, 
I don't know when the shield fell out. It either fell out shortly after I received the knife or it might have been missing when I got it. Uh, a person sent me, a um, long time ago, a person sent me about eight or nine steel warriors because uh, I was always talking about how crappy they were, but I had really never had one, um, which was, you know, a typical thing that uh, foolish people do, uh, complaining about the quality of a knife before they've even actually held the knife and used the knife. And actually, steel warriors are not nearly as bad as I thought they were. Actually, they're pretty decent. I still think a Rough Rider is a better knife, but there are certain patterns in Steel Warrior that are better than Rough Rider. And there's also some patterns that you find in Steel Warrior that you don't find in Rough Rider. For instance, Rough Rider does not make a, uh, a stiletto, but Steel Warrior does. And this one's in White Smooth Bone. I would love it if Rough Rider made a white smooth bone stiletto, but they don't. So I've got the one by uh, Steel Warrior, and it's uh, not a bad little knife, you know, especially for the price. It was pretty uh, inexpensive. However, uh, like I've mentioned many a times, uh, Steel Warriors have a tendency to shed their shields fairly easily. And uh, that's what happened with this one. And I saw someone else uh, doing a video where they uh, basically were trying to find a way to disguise the fact that the knife lost the shield. And what they had done is they had uh, taken a black magic marker and they had filled in the, uh, the void where the shield was. And then they added some uh, clear epoxy to make a new shield. So it was just a, basically a black shield. Well, what I've decided to do is... Uh, uh, try making a shield out of aluminum foil. So uh, what I did was I just took a little ball of aluminum foil, rolled it up, shoved it in the hole, and then started pressing against it. And then when I saw the edges, I trimmed the edges off and then started pressing it in there again. And I was actually using, where's it at? Where's it at? And this little round doohickey to, uh, press the foil into there and uh actually there you have it there's my shield i don't know what you could call the shield other than uh, you know i don't know but it's a shield um it's not perfectly smooth but it also despite not being glued it's staying in there better than the uh uh, Steel Warrior Shields do. So, um, it'll do for now uh, until I can find a replacement shield. I got myself a, a little ball of aluminum foil that I've just crammed into the hole. And uh, from a distance, at least, it looks like a shield. Here's another one of my uh, frost knives. They, This one is what? Looks like white tail cutlery. And this is a copperhead. It's not the one that uses the blade that, this blade that locks it. I do have one of those too, which is pretty cool. But this is just the regular um, white tail frost brand copperhead. About three and a half inches long or so. Yeah, three and, yeah, three and a half inches long or so. And, uh, <laughs> like so many of my frost knives, it has shedded shields. So I'm thinking I'm going to grab a, this is called wiggle eyes, a googly eye, and I'm going to put that in for the shield. We'll see how that works. The trick, of course, is if one of them is going to fit. Ah, well, got this knife. Maybe I can open the bag easier if I use a knife. Hey, that worked pretty well. And so... I got assorted size googly eyes, and I'm going to just try and find one that will fit the hole and stick it in there. You know what? Yeah. It's going to be a little tricky, but I'm going to find one, and once I get one in there, then I'll have an eyeball in my knife. Let me uh, sort through the bag and see if I got one that'll fit. Okay, so one size, this one is just slightly too big. And then this one is way too small. And really, even though that set of sorted sizes, it's these two sizes. So you have 
too small or slightly too big. And so what I'm going to try and do is trim around the edges here with my little Victorinox scissors and see if I can trim this down to size and get it to fit without it falling apart. Um, worth a shot. And I got a whole bag of them to try it with, so you never know. Okay, so once I got it cut down to size, I took the uh, screwdriver tip and I pushed it down in. And unfortunately now I can't get it out, at least not easily. I guess I could pry it out right there, pop it out from right here, and then glue it down. So maybe that's what I'll do. Oop, there it goes, it popped out. Time to glue her down and see how it stays. Well, on the bright side, I managed to get it down into the gap. Um, on the negative side, apparently a little of the super glue slipped in, and now the eyeball is stuck looking to the back like that. So, uh, <laughs> I suppose I could take it off and take another shot at it. But for right now, there you have it. Uh, ooh, get you off of there. My uh, googly eye steel warrior. <laughs> so, another way to replace a shield on your steel warriors when uh, you end up, I'm sorry, this is a white tail cutlery, but when you lose your shield on your frost brand knife, if you got uh, a round shield, see if you can find a googly eye that fits. <laughs> as well as I'm doing it, here's a... Uh, Two other Steel Warrior Copperheads. The, this one here, I believe this is the one that does not lock. Yeah, I see it will not lock. And it has a secondary pin blade. And I kind of like this uh, style of a uh, Copperhead a little bit better. Um, actually, when you're using the pin blade, it feels comfortable in your hand. It's not a real problem, even with the uh, the clip blade in the back because of the, the bump for the... Uh, the copperhead there and when you got the other blade out the uh, the uh, pin blade is out of your way too so it's all right and here's the other one I believe this is the yeah this is the one with the locking blade so when you open this blade up you notice this popped up a bit and this blade is now locked because this blade acts as the lock for this blade so and you can actually still use the knife and you're not really squeezing on that blade so it will not accidentally close because you're squeezing real hard on that blade. And when you're gripping it naturally, you're not really squeezing in on that blade. But press down on that blade and the uh, clip blade closes. Then you open it up and you got a nice little worm cliff over here. So it's a pretty cool blade and a pretty cool knife. So. That is one of the uh, more interesting copperheads by Frost. I'll talk more about these in another video, but I just wanted to show you the googly eye replacement for my white tail here. I think these are brass. It looks like brass. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty much like brass bolsters on it. One of these days I'll find a real shield for it. Um, now we'll get back to the Campco, which we already talked about. In any case, um, I thought I would uh, throw that in with this also, but really what I'm looking for is uh, what you think for the handle on the Camco. And with that, uh, well, I guess I'll let you go. Kitty says hi. Talk to you again soon.